Hey everyone, welcome back to part seven of topic seven in our database class. In this video, I'm going to discuss other types of indexes beyond those that we've seen in previous videos in this series. Let's get started. We can now turn our attention to some other types of indexes that we may encounter. Now I should note that SQL Server provides us with no way of choosing any of these indexes ourselves. So for example, we're next going to talk about a bitmap index. The last time we talked about a B tree index, we have no way in SQL Server of choosing the index type ourselves. So the underlying data structure that forms the index is chosen by SQL Server. This is not universally true across enterprise level database management systems. So there are some other ones out there where you as the database administrator could choose a different type of index. Nevertheless, so that doesn't mean that these aren't useful. As we'll see here with the bitmap index, there are certain certain circumstances where a bitmap index is extraordinarily useful and has great benefits for us. So let's take a look at our next type of index, which is a bitmap index. And this is a completely different idea, a completely different structure from a B tree. So what we're doing here is if we have say one column that contains a relatively small number of unique values, and we have then another color, then we have rows that, uh, you know, could potentially be one or more of those values, then we could use a bitmap index structure. And uh, what we have then is essentially a table. The bitmap index, is, it looks like a two-dimensional table with the rows and columns where the uh, two attributes that are involved are you know, listed one vertically and one horizontally. And we essentially fill in the cells with ones and zeros to indicate whether or not a particular row of data is associated with a particular value of our attribute of interest. So if you are into analytics or data science, and you know about dummy variables or one hot encoding, this is exactly the same idea, right? We're just using a bit value that is a one or a zero, true or false, yes or no to indicate whether the value of one attribute is associated with a particular value of another attribute. So when we have a situation where we have two attributes that have a small number of unique values, or we have, you know, just one attribute and we're looking to do this by rows of data in the table, but you know, it it's, doesn't work well if you have lots and lots and lots of unique values. But if you have a small number, this can work exceptionally well. Indeed, as it says here, when used properly, these types of indexes can be very small, maybe requiring only, you know, about one quarter of the additional disk space that would be required by an equivalent B tree index. And uh, could also be up to 10 times faster. And the reason why is that we're just dealing with bits, right? It's the smallest possible unit of information, a one or a zero. So the database server to judge things, we'll do bitwise comparisons, which are the fastest types of comparison operations that a computer can perform. So it takes a very, very small amount of information, just a single bit, right? Just a single bit of data and the comparisons to judge whether or not, you know, one attribute is associated with another can be performed extraordinarily quickly by virtue of the fact that it's such a tiny, tiny little piece of information, and we're using bitwise comparisons. So rather than continuing to talk about this in text form, let's take a look at an example, and this will immediately become perfectly clear. So what we have here is an example of a bitmap index that is relating student IDs here, which are kind of listed as the rows against possibilities for student grades. 
So if we use, say, a traditional grading scale with five possible options, A, B, C, D, or F, then we just list each of those possible options as a column in this table. And then the cells represent membership or association. So if we're looking at student 101, we see that the value of column B is one and all the other values are zero. This indicates that this student received a grade of a B as did 102 and you know, some other students in here, 107, 108, 110, so on. So if you're the database and you are answering a query, something like, you know, Hey database, give me a list of the IDs for all of the students who got an A or a B, you can see how the database can very quickly answer that query by looking at a table like this, right? By looking at a bitmap index. Remember its comparisons are extraordinarily fast. So all we would have to do is just do a quick bitwise comparison of each of these, and we would have our set of results. So in this case, if we're looking for any student who received an A or a B, it would be pretty easy and extremely fast and efficient to identify those rows of data. In this case, we would be returning back the student IDs. So look at that. It's almost everybody. Hooray. That's a good outcome. But, you know, you can look at it the other way as well. So, you know, you can do things like, I don't know, aggregate functions. Like, hey, database, uh, tell me how many students got a C, right? And it can just quickly sum all of these because again, there's just single bits of information. So it's the tiniest, tiniest possible piece of any, you know, unit of information. So we can just quickly sum those and find that the answer is one and return that result. So this is a bitmap index. Again, you can tell it's not useful for everything. Right? It's really only useful when you have a relatively small number of values, you know, like if I have just a. I don't know, a regular continuous number, you know, that can take on say decimal values where I have an infinite number of distinct possibilities, then this bitmap index is going to be a giant disaster because you potentially could have an infinite number of columns and it would take up a infinite number of storage space, infinite quantity of storage space to build the index. So it's not useful in that kind of situation, but if it's discrete, that is, if you have kind of a fixed number, like a whole unit number of things. In this case, there are five possibilities for student grades, then it works very, very well. And it's extremely fast and efficient, but it does still require a little bit of extra storage space because that's the cost of having an index, right? It's additional information, just like having additional pages that form the index at the back of a textbook. All right. So another type of index that we might contemplate is uh, something called a hash index and the hash indexes rely on something called a hash function. And this is a function that takes an input value of differing sizes okay, and is going to produce an output value of a fixed size. And you know, that output value can be used to represent a location within the index. So these types of indexes are very, very useful when we have a need to be able, for example, to search for large objects quickly. So if you remember, we said that, Hey, you can't build a native index on certain columns that have certain data types, basically any large object data type. So something like an image or a ver binary, or maybe you're storing, I don't know, a video file or PDF file or something like that inside your database. We cannot directly index those kinds of large objects. However, we might set up something like a hash index to kind of work around that problem. So in that case, we would use the large object as input into the hash function. And hash functions, by the way, are extraordinarily fast and efficient. So we would come back with, you know, some sort of location within an index 
or if it's structured in the form of like a dictionary, we would just have an immediate pointer that points to the underlying data row associated with, in this case, our large object. So there's an additional step involved in getting an index to work here, but that additional work, what we get as a reward for doing that additional work is the ability to quickly locate larger complex objects by building sort of a, our own type of index. So again, it's kind of hard to understand when you're looking at it in text or hearing me talk about it, but maybe if we see it as a diagram, this will make sense. So what we have here is an example of a hash index being used to index some images, which of course are large objects, right? So here we have some pictures. These happen to be pictures of my pets. So this is a scout and this is a Sheldon. He's a California desert tortoise. And uh, this is Lyra. That's a scout's half sister. Okay. So imagine that we have these pictures of these three animals and we want to be able to locate them and indeed any image that we store in this table very quickly. So our first step is to take the large object, like an image in this case, right? And uh, we run it through a hash, hash function. So we just, you know, there are lots of standard hash functions out there. So, uh, you know, they're available in any of these programming languages. You can just pick one like SHA or, you know, whatever you might want. And it's going to yield as its output, as we can kind of see in this diagram, a location in a hash index, which you can think of just as a heap or a basic table. Okay. So here we have our hash index and you can see that when we run these images through there, we get just a, a location and <clears throat> that comes with a pointer. The pointer tells us in which row we should look, or in this case, maybe it's a primary key in the underlying data table, right? So if I want to know something about this animal, I can run this photo of the animal through a hash function that says, Hey, it's a location number two in the hash index, which is associated with a row number 147. And we can then look in the underlying table and say, okay, this is Scout, who's owned by owner number one. So this is kind of how these hash indexes work. It kind of serves as a, it's like the hash index kind of serves as a, you know, a quick lookup table where you can take a complex object, like an image or a video, or I don't know, an MP3 file or whatever you want. And it's like Word documents or PDFs or whatever, and we can have a way of quickly locating any of them inside of a database table just by running them initially through a hash function and using a hash index. So that's pretty cool.